And now for our Booth Award. We all know that this is the most prestigious award inside the Volunteers of America family as it is named after our founders, Ballington and Maud Booth. Uh, we have a very illustrious group of past winners uh, that includes Hubert Humphrey, Nancy Reagan, Lady Bird Johnson, Andrew Young, and Cal Ripken Jr., just to have a ball player in there. It's a wonderful, wonderful, illustrious group. This year, we are extremely fortunate to honor a person who has done much for us and much for the community that he resides in and much for the country as he has put his money into his concerns and his passion as well as his time and volunteer effort. And we got to hear from him earlier this week. We're gonna to get to honor him now and that is Jay Martin of Juice Plus. Welcome Jay Martin to, to the stage to accept the best, biggest award we have. Mike, I wish you'd given me this honor or this uh, position first instead of third. It's hard, to, it's pretty hard to follow these two that uh, just came forward. Anytime anybody receives an award like this, we all hear the same thing. I want to thank everybody. I want it's not really mine and all this, but I do have to, to recognize a couple of uh, uh, people are, are at least one person in one organization. My wife, Sandra, who is uh, my conscience, and she's a daggone good one, I'll tell you that. And in the words of Don Donald Trump, mine is not that bad either. <laughs> I just cannot help myself. I just, I just cannot. I want to be on Saturday Night Live so bad, I just cannot <laughs> stand it. And the organization I represent, I would just, uh, I cannot say enough about. Uh, we, just, we have been uh, involved primarily in our area for uh, years, several years. And we decided to step out and be more involved on a national and even an international uh, uh, scene. And we ask our people if uh, they would like to participate in our doing that through a payroll deduction. 99%, and I'll find out who the others are. Uh, <laughs> 99% of the 50,000 Juice Plus franchisees in North America said yes. So, that's pretty good because you don't have to depend on me. Uh, but I would like to also tell a story, a short one. I grew up in a little town of uh, 500 people. My father was a school principal. And the one thing that I felt like that I really got from being in that environment uh, as far as academics were concerned were two English teachers. My first one was my mother. And I would call her a trees English teacher. She was into grammar. If I didn't use the possessive case with a gerund, she washed my, soap, my mouth out with lava soap. <laughs> the other one was my high school English teacher, and she was more in the forest, and she was into poetry. And if you were going to pass our class, you had to not only learn but understand poetry. And her final exam consisted of a fishbowl with several poems in the fishbowl, and the class would go up and draw what poem they had to say or they had to recite. 
And we had, every one of us had nicknames. When you grow up in a town like that, you don't go by your own name. Haggis Brown was our first baseman, and he, grew, he drew uh, crossing the bar. Wormy Henshaw <laughs> was our second baseman. And Wormy had a pretty decided lisp. And as it would, you know, as you know it had to be, he drew Paul Revere's wide by Henry Wadsworth Wongfellow. <laughs> Ears Evans. And if you had a, some, any type of physical issue, it, it followed you the rest of your life. Ears, according to his father, flew off the couch before uh, he walked. <laughs> well, I came up to the fishbowl, drew it, and I drew a poem called A Boo Ben Autumn. A Boo Ben Autumn. I had absolutely no idea who Abu Ben Adam was or anything about Abu Ben Adam. But you not only had to recite the poem, you had to give some type of meaning. You had to, to interpret that poem. So, but she was so strict that if you didn't say it, the chances of passing English were non-existent, essentially non-existent. You had to keep trying and keep doing it. I'll never forget getting up there and trying to say, or did say, a boom and out I've never forgotten it to this day. That was in 1961. A boom and autumn. May his tribe increase. Awoke one night from a deep dream of peace and saw within the moonlight in his room, making it rich and like a lily in bloom, an angel writing in a book of gold. Exceeding peace had made Ben Adam bold, and to the presence in the room he said, what writest thou? The vision raised its head, and with a look made of all sweet accord answered, the names of those who love the Lord. And is mine one, said Abu? Nay, not so. The angel said, Abu spoke more low, but cheerily still and said, I pray thee then, write me as one who loves his fellow man. The angel wrote and vanished. The next night it appeared again with a great awakening light and showed the names whom love of God had blessed, and lo, Ben Adam's name led all the rest. And now I was faced with interpreting that, and I asked my mother what she thought, and she said, God is telling us not to just love himself, but to live everybody else. Thank you very much, Mike, and thank you for a great organization.